Glaucomus volans, which is the smallest member of the species Glaucomus and is commonly known as the southern flying squirrel. The first person to make a Rocky and Bullwinkle joke fails the final. <laughs> Mr. Campbell, you got a question? So, like, do these squirrels have anything in common with um, Santa's reindeer? <laughs> Except for the fact that they're both mammals, no. The uh, flying squirrel doesn't actually fly. It, well, of course, the reindeer don't actually fly either. As we all know, the reindeer leaps, whereas the Glaucomus volans uses a black-edged membrane between the fore and hind feet to glide. And when this membrane is pulled taut, it allows the squirrel to become airborne. And just before it reaches its target, which is usually a trunk of a tree or a branch of a tree, it drops its tail and lifts its shoulders. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> Jerry, I've just been going over your student evaluations. They're excellent. Your lecture series was very interesting, and your peer evaluations are strong. Well, that's great, but I know what you're going to say. Publish or perish, right? That's not my rule. <laughs> Don't worry, Norman. You'll get your article. When? It's almost done. Look, I know more about flying squirrels than anyone on the planet. I'll make the department look good. That's why I recommended your tenure. I appreciate it, Norman. You're one of our best, Jerry. I won't let you down. So the little doll named Christina is scared of the candle because it could burn her hair. So she covers the candle with the scarf. And then she draws a hole with a blue crayon and jumps through it, landing in her own bed safe and sound. And they all live happily ever after. Fantastic. Grace tale. I love the way you used the crayon. That was my downfall. I couldn't figure out how to use it. <laughs> That's because you tried too hard. Have I ever won this game? Mm. No. Mm -mm. Okay, you up to bed. I can't. I have to give poor daddy another chance to win. Hey, I can win if I want to. Sure you could. Oh. oh. And if you don't mind, I think I'll take my very favorite scarf back. Uh-oh. I think we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Oh, a bottle of uh, $12 champagne. <laughs> exactly what are we attempting to celebrate? Your tenure. Oh, yeah? I haven't got it yet. You will. Are you sure about this? Yes. And I have actual proof. They're Christmas roses. I see. Mm-hmm. They are the brightest pink you will ever see, and they won't bloom for 11 months. Hmm. And? And? That means I'm confident we'll still be here in 11 months. 
rather than moving to some new university with some new neighborhood and some new neighbor whose dog barks all night. I love you. So, how's the squirrel research coming? Are we going to be ready? Well, uh, tell me, do I look like the kind of guy who would disappoint your flowers? No. Good. You know, there's no scientific evidence that this whole starlight, star bright thing actually works. Well, it hasn't failed me yet. Well, maybe I should give it a try, cover all my bases. It won't work for you. Why not? Because you have to believe with your whole heart. Stars are funny things. They'll only listen when you're ready to wish on them. They're just waiting for you to believe. Yes. Well, Miss Isaacson, come on in. Have a seat. What can I do for you? I wanted to give you a present for all your help. <laughs> you don't have to bribe me. You've already got your A. I thought this might interest you. Oh. My grandfather used to show it to me every Christmas when I was little. Well, what is it? Uh... Book of folk tales? No. It's written by a man named Solomon Andre. He's a very prominent scientist back in the 1800s. Really? It's a scientific work? Oh, yes. It's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very thoughtful of you. You're welcome. Although the southern flying squirrel is primarily non-hibernating, severe winter conditions may induce a metabolic torpor in some. This torpid state outwardly resembles hibernation, although it is short-lived and not as deep. Oh, time for me to hibernate. July 11, 160 degrees longitude. Fantastic sight. Large mammals in flight. A hundred or more reindeer streaking across the morning sky in a northerly direction. Hey. Hi, I'm uh, sorry. I had to work so late. I, I totally lost track of time. Oh, is she asleep? Oh, yeah, for about 11 hours now. She left your grace tail on the table. She made a story out of this? Mm-hmm. What did she do with the hat? She had the magic pillow pull an apple out of it. <laughs> oh, she's brilliant. She's your daughter. Oh, thanks. So how's it going? Squirrels still gathering nuts and scampering? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. It's great. Fine. Fine? Yeah, don't worry. I'm not worried. Do I look worried? Well, it's gonna be great. Just trust me. I'm gonna uh, shower and change for work. Good idea. Except it's Saturday. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> Have landed 
late today to repair balloon and gather supplies in the Alaskan territory at the mouth of Prudhoe Bay. Have fun, little leopard. <laughs> Thank you. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. Whoa, that's a scary pirate. Did you get some good stuff? Yeah. Whoa. The hair is similar in design to the feather of a common sparrow. Faster, guys, faster! Okay, let's fly! The hair shaft itself is hollow, allowing for extra buoyancy. That's how they do it! That's how they fly! Who flies? Huh? Oh, us, Gracie, us! <laughs> Protruding eye sockets act as a shield, much like a pair of ski goggles. Oh, boy. Ugh. When's Daddy getting home? Soon, sweetie. He's still working really hard on that uh, research for his article. Don't touch that, okay? It's hot. Maybe we should call him. No, nope, he'll remember. When? When he remembers that it's Thanksgiving and that he has two cooks in the kitchen working very hard for him. See, I would never forget Thanksgiving. It's the holiday with the turkey, right? No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm on my way. I'm leaving right now. Bye. Thanksgiving, what is the matter with you? Happy Thanksgiving! Bye! Whoa, something smells good in here. Turkey! Yeah? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna change my clothes and I'll be down in a minute. Bye-bye. How long does it take to change your clothes? Poor daddy. <sighs> He's working so hard for us. Don't worry, it'll all be over soon. Then we'll get daddy back? Mm, yes, then we'll get daddy back. Right front hoof. They're designed for greater lift and higher angle of thrust. Antler on the range for Tyrandus creates wind resistance resulting in lift. Its configuration creates a vortex of wing at high speeds. Liftoff power equivalent to a jet plane at one ten thousandth the weight. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm home. I'm sorry, I get held up again at the physics lab. You know what? You can cut the act. I know what you're really doing at that lab all night. You do? Got some cute little redhead you're tutoring? Oh, <laughs> no, never happened. I go for blondes. You know that. Mm-hmm. Is she okay? She's fine. What happened? Oh, she had an attack because she ran home from school a little bit too fast tonight. Well, she's all right. Yeah, she's fine. And next week, you're going to be fine. You're going to hand in your article, you're going to get your tenure, and then we're going to have three perfect weeks together. You, me, Grace, and Christmas. I hope so. Daddy. Right, Daddy. Very good. You remember. <laughs> Are you feeling better now? I'm fine, Daddy. Great. How about a story? Okay. What's this? Uh, that's one of my books. It's a book about a guy named Andre. What did he do? Well, he used to make a lot of hot air balloon flights way up north in the Arctic, and he, uh, he would send messages back by carrier pigeon. Is he still alive? No, no, that was a long time ago. He disappeared. I guess uh, balloons weren't always the safest way to get around. Did you always want to fly? Um, well, no, not always, but uh, something 
happened to me when I was about your age, and it got me interested in flying. And then, you know, one day I got my pilot's license. What happened? Well, that's a long story, and uh, I'll tell you about it sometime. Can we go see Santa tomorrow night? Uh, you don't have to. I know you're busy. It's okay. No, no, I could go. It's just that the mall is so crazy. Why don't we try to get his email address? Shh. What? Listen. It's the wind. No, it's the elves. Elves? You mean like Santa's elves? Is that it what you is. think? <laughs> They're checking on me. That's the reindeer, Daddy. They're on the roof right now. <sighs> Boy, that would simplify things. What are you doing? I'm supposed to be asleep. That's what they're checking on. Come on, Daddy. Close your eyes. You're a very strange kid, you know that? Mommy says I'm just like you. <laughs> okay. Jerry, what is all? Norman, hi. Uh, well, Norman, it's, um, I've been, Norman, I've come across some information. And, well, actually, it's more than information. It's a continuation of another scientist's work, a 19th century scientist. And, and uh, well, Norman, what I've, what I've learned has led me to believe that I might be able to prove that reindeer have the ability to fly. You must be joking. I know how it looks, but uh, Norman, I have more than a hypothesis. I have corroboration right here. Tell me you're not writing a book about flying reindeer. Norman, what if I can produce empirical, indisputable, scientific evidence that I'm right? Are you out of your mind? I stuck my neck out for you. I know that, Norman, and I'm very grateful, but this can change the world. It is not my job to change the world, Jerry. It is my job to recommend tenure and to secure the future of this department with teachers who understand that teaching and publishing... This will be great for the department, Norman. This will put the department on the map. I just need time to finish my research. Jerry, you've left me no choice but to withdraw my recommendation for tenure. You're crazy. Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but I didn't know how. I knew you were going to just... What? What was I going to do? Not approve? Try to stop you? Okay, listen. Jeez. Bear with me, okay? I know this sounds crazy, but I'm gathering evidence. Wake up, Jerry. We are not kids anymore. We have responsibilities. You need your job. She needs medical insurance and stability and parents that she can count on. I know that. You don't have to tell me that, but I believe in what I'm doing here, and I thought if I had time, I could convince... I don't care. You know what? I'm taking Grace to my mom's. I just need time to think, okay? Oh, honey, don't, don't, don't go to your mother's. I understand why you're upset about this reindeer business. Oh, it's... you don't get it. It's not about the reindeer. You lied to me, Jerry. You've never done that before. I love you, you know? I'm just not so sure that I can trust you anymore. pretty bad this time of year. Oh, yeah. I'll be fine. Dr. McNeil. Hey. We'd like you to take this with you. It's a homing device. Something happens, hit this button, we'll come looking for you. You guys don't have to worry about me. I've been flying since I was a kid.
Day one. Following the route laid down by Andre, 123 degrees, 38 minutes west, 73 degrees, 15 minutes north. Day two. Have altered route, five degrees. Day four, heading north by northwest, 10 degrees. Still no sign. Come on, where are you? Nancy, triple eight, 92. My fuel's low, I'm heading back in for the day, over. Roger, Nancy, triple eight, 92. See you back at the base. I saw a flying reindeer. <laughs> I saw Jerry? Repeat, Jerry, you're breaking up. I saw a flying reindeer! Oh, no. Oh, no. Mayday? Come in. Mayday. Jerry, stay current position. Guys, I don't know where I am. I just know I'm in a lot of trouble right now. I'm out of fuel. This is Nancy Triple Eight Nine Two. Mayday, Mayday. Santa's lap every year. But usually Daddy's here. Hey, it's almost your turn. Whoa! Oh, oh. Can we just go? Sweetie, what is it? This is stupid. That's not Santa. Well, no, but it's one of his helpers. He just listens to what the children want and then he passes it along. How do you know he's real? You can't see him. You can't touch him. There is no empirical evidence. No one in my whole class believes in him. Empirical evidence? <laughs> Grace. You love mommy and daddy, right? Yes, so? Prove it. What? How? Well, show it to me. I don't see it, and I can't touch it, so where is it? I don't know. It just is. It's in here. I know it is, honey. And you know how I know that? Because I believe in you. And sometimes you just have to have faith that what's in your heart is as real as what you see with your eyes. So you think there is a Santa? You think he can hear me? Well, I've always felt him in my heart. Next, please. Grace, wait. <laughs> Hello, little girl. 
What can Santa bring you for Christmas this year? I know you're not the real Santa, but I know you can get a message to him. All right, what would you like me to tell him? See what I can do? So, what did you ask Santa for? If I tell you, it might not come true. Oh, I see. Mom. Yeah? Can we go home now? Sure, sweetie. Not Grandma's house. I mean, real home. Yes. We can go home. Excuse me. Who are you? Where's my plane? You crashed. I saved your life. My entire back is in spasm from pulling you. End of story. Am I dead? Is this heaven? Does your head hurt? Yes. Then no. How much do you weigh? I'm only guessing, but I'd say a buck seventy without shoes. Someone offers you cake, say no once in a while. Edge of the village. Can I take him back, or do we have to keep him? Is, is that him? I don't know. <sighs> yes, that's him. Come on, Francer. Hey, <laughs> body fat. You're doing a good job, Prancer. Mm. Once I get back after Christmas, they don't do anything for two months. They rest and eat like crazy. I'm Katra. Jerry, you measure their body fat? Oh, yes. In March, they have to start getting back into shape. Cupid here is at 7% body fat. I gotta keep my eye on you. Does everybody here speak English? Of course. We study all languages. At last count, we have 37 different languages here. But, uh, we manage English, too. Come on, folks, what do you say? We got a lot of work to do the next couple of days. You'll all get a chance to meet him later. Mandalay. Max Schnell! The boss wants to see you. The boss? Yeah. You mean that's... That's Nick. Nick? Yeah. Saint Nick. 
sleds and presents. Santa Claus? He prefers Nick. This isn't possible. Where am I? What's going on? Again with the questions. Just follow me. <laughs> If you think we're going to do the sleigh pulling thing again, you're way off. How are you? I think I'm alive. I, I could be dreaming, but I'd have to wake up before I could answer that. You're not asleep. So I'm awake? Well, the guy's a genius. Yes. And this is Santa's village. And you're Santa Claus? And you're an elf. I prefer toy controller or Christmas engineer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I just I can't believe that. Reindeer. Look at them. They're flying all over the place. They're flying all over the place. I can't tell you how many years I waited for this. <laughs> I just have a few thousand questions to ask before I start my research. I, I, I'm sorry. I know I'm dabbling. I just can't believe I'm really here. What kind of research, Jerry? Oh, I'm just a zoologist. We're going to need biologists and, and meteorologists and medical doctors too. This cut on my forehead healed up in less than an hour. These things have to be studied. Finally, I'm going to be able to prove to them. I'm not. Who's them? Everyone. My esteemed colleagues. Even my wife. Here's the new list, Stan. Need you to sign off on the ones I gave you yesterday. I'm not finished, Cora. Oh, no problem. Christmas will just be late this year. I'm sure no one will notice. He'll be there on 27th, maybe the 28th. Wrap up the cookies and don't wait up. You must be the new one. Great. Just what I needed this week. More paperwork. Ugh. More love. We're eating at Nick's. Don't be late. No, dear. Yes, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Santa, uh, Nick, I promise you're not even going to know I'm here. I just have to learn as much as I can about this place, document a few things, and then I'll be out of your hair. Smile. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, you know what? Let me get a shot of just the two of you, okay? <sighs> Where's my camera? How did you do that? I'm fast. Forget about the camera, pal. Is that some sort of a law up here? More like a tradition. Well, what about my bag? There's some things in there I'm going to need. Don't worry, Jerry. We'll give you everything you need. Okay. I need to use the phone. Phone? Yeah, I got to make some calls. Oh, we have no phones up here. No phones? Hmm. Well, is there any other way to get a message out? <laughs> not this century. Guys, come on! My family is going to find out I'm not home, and they're going to get worried. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to head back. Head back? Yeah, go home. Oh, the only people who ever leave here are the the helpers, the true believers. Well, I'm here. I've seen it. I'm a believer. True believers. What's the difference? Oh, it takes courage to be a true believer to risk being ridiculed because you have faith in something that most people think is ridiculous. I've been doing that for years. That's what got me here in the first place. Sorry, Jenny. You are not a true believer. So you're saying I can't leave? Why don't you take a look around? Get a feel for the place. You may like it here. I can already tell we're going to be very close. No, 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 I have to try to figure out a way to get home. Oh, good idea. Take your time. This guy is a serious problem, Nick. I tried to tell you, but you never listened to me. You worry too much. Tell them we're taking them home, and then dump them somewhere in the tundra. That's the Christmas spirit, Morlov. Hey, you know, polar bears gotta eat too. The world is getting smaller. We always knew this day might come. Don't you realize what this means? If this guy ever gets back and proves that you exist, it's over. There will be no more Christmas. No, Morlov. There will always be a Christmas. There just won't be any more me. Daddy, we're home, Daddy. Daddy. Honey. Daddy. Where's Daddy? I don't know. Air Alaska. 
come from somewhere, a phone or a fax? They come from the believer's room. Great. Now, if I could just get in there for a minute. Are you kidding? Come here. No one gets in the believer's room. But... No buts. Without special permission from Nick, you don't get in there. Nice to meet you. Your paperwork will be ready in January. January? What are you talking about? to find us. She would have called us by now. Yeah. Just roll over and go to sleep, okay? I'm sure we'll hear from Daddy very soon. Okay? But what if we don't? We will. to see if I'm right, not just for myself, but for what it will mean for you and Grace. I love you both more than anything in this world, Jerry. God. We're in Alaska, Jerry. This is impressive. The presidents know about you? Of course they do. All the presidents have known about me. Oh. They've had to clear airspace for me with the FAA. They don't tell anybody about you? Who'd believe them? Good point. Uh, Carter? JFK? Where's Nixon? Oh, he tried to get Nick on tape. Mutation zone. It's going to be very popular. It's grotesque. But, Daddy, this is what kids are asking for. Video games with combat forces and remote... And what if they ask for sticks of dynamite? Should I put that in their stockings? <laughs> <laughs> we have had 22 years of declining believer numbers. Now, why is that? It's the product, Daddy. I mean, dolls and sleds are so old-fashioned. May I finish, please? I have a marketing plan that'll change everything. Will you both please give me a break? Now, someday I am going to retire and you two will take over. But until that time, we are not going to manufacture destructive games, no matter how popular. I noticed that the, the air here is uh, quite a bit thinner. Does, does that help the reindeer to uh, fly? Wouldn't your daughter love one of these? Oh, uh, well, she's more into story games. Would you please get that thing off the table? You are really out of touch, Dad. And it's starting to hurt the business. <laughs> ah, they're making me crazy. I can't wait till she's 200. Did you say 200? Mm. You mean that your daughter is 200 years old? 190. It's a difficult age, you understand. Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't understand. H how old are the two of you, if you don't mind my asking? Well, Nick is 1,640. And I'm only 1,610 child bride. We age very slowly up here, Jerry. I see, but why? No one knows. Jerry, would you do me a big favor? Sure. Please don't ask about getting into the believer's room anymore. It's a very sensitive subject. Why? Well, you have to understand that people ask him for all sorts of things, not just toys. And sometimes they're sick. And sometimes they're just sad. And they ask him for things that he can never give them. But well, he wants to, but he can't. And, well, it bothers him. He 
never says anything, but wives know. So that's why the believer's room has to stay private. Please understand. Sasha, answer me this. If Nick was trapped somewhere and he had no way to get back to you, don't you think he'd use everything in his power to find a way home? Why do we always get stuck carrying the rain? I don't know. Friends are easy. Wondering how they fly. Ah, uh, no, no. I was just, uh, just admiring them. You must be the newcomer. How do you do? Jerry McNeil. Solomon Andre. Really? Uh, well, are you the third or the fourth? Or was that your great-grandfather? I'm afraid I am the only Solomon Andre I know. But that would make you 150 years old. 154 this summer. Look rather good, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Let's have some tea. Mrs. McNeil? Yes? May I come in, please? Naughty nice-wise, Jerry's been nice his whole life. He had a sighting when he was eight. Well, they usually think it's a dream. Forget about it by age 11. Not this guy. He became obsessed. Is there a chance that he's a true believer? No. I tried to tell him. But listen to this. His kid is a fervent true believer. She's never doubted, Nick. She's amazing. Other kids in her class try to tell her she's wrong, and she won't give in. We never used to lose seven-year-olds. Must be the boring toys. Give it up, you two. They spent hours in very dangerous weather searching for your husband. There's no way he could survive. I'm sorry, Mrs. McNeil. You're going to have to accept that your husband is probably not coming back. I can't. And I can't go out there and tell my daughter that her father is... Where's Daddy? Come here, sweetheart. Come and sit down. Uh, I'll be in the other room if you need me. Why are you crying? Um, sweetie, I'm a little worried. Daddy went to Alaska a couple of days ago. And he went up there and he took a little plane out. Daddy's a good pilot. Yeah, I know, the best. It just seems that they can't find his plane. The truth is, is that they don't think that... Well, they, they think that Daddy may have had an accident. Daddy's okay. <laughs> we have to go to Alaska and find him. I know he's okay. But, honey, he might not be okay. But, Mommy, I feel it. In here. I know you can't see it or touch it. But sometimes you have to believe in what's in your heart, even though you can't see it with your eyes. <laughs> okay. Okay, sweetie, you're right. You're right. We'll go. Actually, your fault that I'm here. I am flattered. Sugar? Uh, sure. Thanks. When I was a kid, I saw a flying reindeer. Me too. Wasn't it marvelous? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't know. It, it's made my life pretty complicated. I wouldn't even be here if one of my students hadn't brought me your book. Lemon? No, thank you. So I guess you're stuck here too. 
No, no. I can leave whenever I like. I am a helper. I choose to stay here. But you have to go back. With all the knowledge you have of how this place works, you were the first one to find it. You should get credit. Look around, Jerry. See, all the people of our size, a lot of people beat you and me here. But you risked your life to prove that reindeer could fly. Well, that's not why I came here. I came here to work with Nick. Okay, let me get this straight. You, Solomon Andre, one of the most respected scientists of your time, you came here to be Santa's helper? It's a wonderful job, really. But don't you realize how famous you would have become if you'd gone back with all that information? The rumors were correct. You are not a true believer. I wish somebody would just lighten up about this true believer stuff. I'm here, aren't I? I can see you exist. Doesn't that make me a true believer? No, because you keep trying to prove that we exist. I have to go and check on the weather. How come this place has never been found? Few reasons. Our unique weather conditions hides us in a sort of a mist. It's actually snowing up there. You mean right up there? We are also an island of ice. We move from time to time. So we are never exactly in the same place twice. Really? The true believers found us because they wanted to. There was something inside them that was their guide. You are the only non-believer who found us. How did you manage it? I ran out of gas. Wasn't it convenient? <laughs> well, we are very well protected here, and we pray it stays that way. Can you imagine what would happen if we were discovered? It might not be so bad. Oh. Tourists, fast food places, and you know, those theme park people. They would like a piece of it. No, we like it just the way it is. And you will too. Jerry. Hi. I'm just, uh, just having a look around. Every place but here, Jerry. Sure. Um, Nick, tell me something. These, these believers are really important to you, right? Yes. So uh, what about my daughter? She believes in you, in spite of me. Sometimes, I, I know this is crazy, but sometimes I even think my wife still believes <laughs> in you. So, so if they're believers, are true believers, then, then tell me something. How come every year I have to go out and buy toys? How come you don't come to my house? Once a year, I ask people to believe in something that can't and shouldn't be proved. But if I have two believers and one non-believer in the same house and suddenly presents show up on Christmas morning, then that would be proof, wouldn't it? I know it's, it's not quite fair, but I don't come to your house because you don't believe. Anything you need, please just let us know. Daddy was here. Yeah, that's right. He stayed in this room. Mr. Haskins, I'd like to get started right away, if you don't mind. What was Jerry's location when you last had radio contact with him? You see, 
Dad works east to west following the sun. Well, this gives him an extra 24 hours a night. Still a lot of work for one man. Who said he does it alone? Isn't this a little small for all those toys? This is one of the helper sleighs. We start shipping stuff out weeks ahead of time. Dad empties one sleigh, and boom, there's another full one waiting for him. It's kind of like a pit stop. <laughs> Helpers get to go down there all the time. Everyone gets to go but us. What's it like down there? Well, it's different. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, why don't we uh, just uh, hitch this up and take a spin down there and I'll show you around. Dad would kill us. He thinks it's too dangerous. He says you're all nice to each other on Christmas Day, but other than that, it's a little crazy. And the fewer true believers there are, the crazier it gets. He's got a point, I guess. You're gonna like it here, Jerry. And you launched a search? Immediately. But what you have to understand, Mrs. McNeil, is that a lot of this area is water. And if he went down there, well, there'd be nothing to find. OK, how much fuel was he carrying? And what was his range of flight? Look, I really admire your determination. Now. Look, this doesn't look good. What? This storm is coming right past where your husband's plane, uh, well, that's the last place we saw him on radar. Now, we continued to have communication with him for a little while. We heard him yell, mayday, and then something about rain flying at him. We went to the meteorology satellite maps, and the maps indicated that the storm he was referring to was over here. And we searched all through this weather pattern, and we didn't find anything. I know he's alive. Look, um, we were kind of wondering what, what he was doing up there anyway. He's trying to prove that reindeer can fly. Man, with all due respect, isn't that a little, uh, crazy? It certainly is. Everybody knows they can fly. Why does he have to prove it? saving my life. There's just one more thing I want you to do for me, okay? Well, it's not really for me. It's, it's, it's really for my family. Okay. I... Hey! Hey! Hey, Prent! Prancer! Come back. What are you doing? Come back here! You're taking me home. of these. What am I going to do? Uh. Uh. Jerry? Uh -huh. What are you doing? When did you stop believing? 
people grow up, you can't always believe in magic. Sad. Look, Katra, I have to live down there in the real world. Things have to add up. They've got to make sense. Why do you want to go back to a place like that? There's a lot of wonderful things down there. Like what? Like my family. Even the little things, like the way Debbie brings me coffee in the morning and waves that cup in front of my nose. Grace's face when she wakes up in the morning. I miss playing Grace Tales. What's that? Oh, it's, a, it's a game I made up for my for my daughter when she was a little girl. She's seven now. She, I guess that's about 40 to you folks. <laughs> Here. Oh, wow, she's pretty. Thanks. Looks like her mom. So how do you play the game? Well, uh, it's easy. You just uh, you pick any five objects that are in the room, and you, you have to make a story using the five objects. Whoever makes up the best story wins. You made it up. No batteries, no instructions, no moving parts. No, no. Well, Grace was in the hospital for a while when she was little. She, she has asthma, and there were a lot of times when she couldn't go out and play with the other kids. That's when I made it up. Sounds like fun. It was. Yes, it was. And I'll never play it again. It's my own fault. Do you think Daddy will be home in time for Christmas? Sweetie, I think that if Daddy could find a way to get to us, he would. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Daddy can't ever come home. Oh, honey, come here. Come here. Now, you listen to me. Now, you had a feeling that Daddy was going to be OK, right? I have the same feeling. So we need to try to hold on to that feeling together, OK? wrong we just uh, wanted to tell you about the you know those song. toys we keep bugging you to make uh, uh. well we changed our minds that's all uh. go back to sleep see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Bring him home. I want to go home. Nick asked me to show you this. You seem to be fascinated with how he is able to do everything he does. Maybe the question you should be asking is why he does what he does. Many, many years ago, there was a community of little people, elves, and they were the most industrious people in the world. A fact that was noticed by an invading horde of Vikings. Plants were made. They would capture and enslave the elves and their flying reindeer. Or failing in this, kill them. Only one Viking found that idea distasteful. A young man named Nicholas. Nick warned the elves about the Vikings, and they fled 
that very night. But the Viking kept following them, and now they also wanted to kill Nicholas. Viking were very funny that way. And so and the elves kept heading north, hoping that the Vikings would give up on them. And eventually, they did. By the time the elves had traveled all the way up here and discovered this oasis where they could live with a modicum of comfort. Pleasant as it was, however, there was no food or building materials. But they had a reindeer. So every night they would fly south. And for lack of a better word, they borrowed the things they needed to survive. You mean they started out as a bunch of thieves? Well, they never took much from any one place. And after a year or so, they didn't have to. And once that happened, Nicholas got an idea. They would make presents and give them to those people who used to borrow things from. When they saw how happy these gifts made people, they made more and more, and eventually it became a full-time job. But why Christmas Eve? Could you think of a better night? <laughs> I guess not. Ah, oh, Jerry, you can do more good staying here and working here than you ever could back home. But I have a family. Your plane crashed. Your family thinks you are dead. This is your home now. Uh, what, Mommy? Oh, nothing, sweetie. I just had a bad dream, that's all. Oh. Go back to sleep, okay? He was seen on the radar. That's where his plane went down. And I need one of you to take me there. Why aren't you in bed? <laughs> Why aren't you? I'm not the one that has to fly around the world tomorrow night. You make the lists, but I'm the one that checks them twice. Well, it's a much smaller list this year, that's for sure. Every few generations this happens. People think they don't need you, but they come back. They always do. I had it pressed. Oh, red, I can't stand red. It's just not my color. You do this every year. It's what they expect, Nick. Remember the year you went out in blue? You almost got shot as a burglar. <laughs> Besides, I like you in that suit. You do, do you? I do. <laughs> and I let the pants out a little. <laughs> Let's go to bed. It's a big day tomorrow. Hmm. Oh, you two are up awfully late. We had some wrapping to do. Really? 
We took all the Mutation Zone games... Oh, please tell me you didn't pack them. We did. But first, we reprogrammed them. But I... I... It's still a video game, but... You go into the game and you pick five objects from a list of hundreds. Then you have to make a story out of those objects. Whoever makes the best story wins. It's good, because you can't play alone. It encourages families to play together. And it helps kids with basic problem solving and sharpens their storytelling skills. Where did you get this from? Jerry, the game's called Grace Tales. You made it up. Now, when was the last time I told you two that I loved you? This This morning. morning. Well, that's far too many hours to pass without saying it again. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) You, you, and you, follow me. Listen to your daughter. You know, I had a wonderful dream last night. I dreamt my children came into my office and gave me an idea. And I actually listened to them. And it was a good idea, too. So, your mother and I have something for you. Come, come, come. Come on. I made these for you a little while ago. I just wasn't sure you were ready for them. I want you to come with me next year. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, but between now and then, if you make me crazy, the deal's off. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. This is like a train set, and the one with the drawbridge. And keep that on. Out. And. Yeah, um, I want to have you. Yeah, I want to Look at him. Little girl, what can Santa bring you this Christmas? real Santa, but I know you can get a message to him. Grace? All right, what would you like me to tell him? Please help Mommy and Daddy make us a family again. You don't want any toys? That's all I want, just my Daddy back. 
see what I can do. I'm sorry, Grace. Mom, can we go home now? Not Grandma's house. I mean, real home. This is Foxtrot Juliet 107, receiving the distress signal. We've pinpointed the location and we'll investigate, Hoover. Roger, FJ-107. Who is that? That's the Air Force. They'll be able to get there a lot faster than we can. They think that Daddy may have had an accident, sweetie. Daddy's okay. We have to go to Alaska and find him. I know he's okay. Sweetie, he may not be okay. But, Mommy, I feel it. In here. I know you can't see it or touch it. But sometimes you have to believe in what's in your heart, even though you can't see it with your eyes. Please, Mommy. Jerry! Nick! I, I, just, I just thought I needed proof. <laughs> well, your daughter didn't need proof, did she? I know you can't see it or touch it. But sometimes you have to believe in what's in your heart. Well, what are we standing here for? It's Christmas Eve. We're left. We've got work to do. We better hustle, or we're going to be late. If we're not too late already.
dear. He was right. I knew it. Jerry! That's Jerry! This is Fox Juliet 107. Returning for another sweep, Wilbur. They're coming back! J107? I'm reporting a solar anomaly. Returning to base, over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything you had to go through. Did you find what you were looking for? Yes, I did. I found it. It took a while, but I found it. <laughs> I'll never doubt you again. You're not going to believe where I've been. <laughs> I... What am I saying? You're the only two people I know who will believe me. On behalf of Olympia University, I would like to present with honor and gratitude the Award of Excellence to Dr. Jerry McNeil. The critical acclaim lavished on his definitive article on flying squirrels has taken this department to new heights, pun intended. Ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed colleague, Dr. Jerry McNeil. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ferguson, and thank you all for this wonderful celebration. I want to especially thank my wife, Debbie, and our daughter, Grace, for all of their support and belief in me. 
You know, a year ago when I had my plane crash, I, I never thought that I would be standing here today in front of all of you, let alone achieve tenure and receive this wonderful award. But uh, I'll tell you, since then, I've learned that even the most improbable things can happen if you believe with all your heart. Hey, Dad. One for you. Yeah? Is it from you? No. No? Huh. <laughs> Santa came. He really came this year. Of course he came. It's Christmas! Go home now. You take me to the world once a year and you can't let me enjoy it for ten minutes? Here we go again. A nice dinner or show? Is that so much to ask for? Yes, dear. I, I mean, no, dear. Merry Christmas, honey. Merry Christmas. Hallmark Movie Channel presentation. When is the right time to take a chance on love? There's a time to be cautious and a time to be passionate. The sequel to the critically acclaimed film, The Note, Jeannie Francis. You think I'm looking for excuses? Ted McGinley. Why can't you tell me what's really keeping us apart? A Hallmark Movie Channel presentation, Taking a Chance on Love. Coming up next on Hallmark Movie Channel.